So I talked about this compactor thing which largely is used then there is the transportation issue okay. Then the transportation is should we have larger trucks that is what I tell to students should we have smaller trucks okay and then you must have heard about transfer stations yes you have heard but many students may not have heard so I also tell them what is a transfer station and why it is required okay because they may not be knowing but why do we need transfer station and I also tell them that why what are the problem with the larger trucks. Larger trucks are good in terms of the total amount of waste they can take in terms of per unit cost that should be okay but for example if we have a communities or cities where there are really really small small streets larger truck will not go there okay. You will find that I do not know whether university but in my this area we find that sometime you will find that there is a big truck which goes to collect waste and the whole street is choked because of there is only one place to get. So then the question comes whether the large trucks are good or better and then the question comes whether we should have transfer station. I tell them what is transfer station it is basically to collect waste from different small small places and put it into a larger truck etc. so that it can be transported. And the people then ask that should we have a transfer station or not that is an important question to ask for. Should we have it or not? Should we have a transfer station? Okay, yes, 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 okay, but then it is a question that if I want to have a transfer station inside a city that also will have some kind of order problem etc. and that precious land for example in cities like Mumbai is no, no, right. And then also comes the issue of NIMBY, not in my backyard, I do not want transfer station here to my house, right, okay. So these kind of uh, in socio environmental issues need to be considered and the routing, routing is also important what time the waste should be collected from individual houses right and what should be the path. So I tell them it is a critical math, critical path method of you can use a CPM part problem. I do not go into detail for the obvious reason because it is just 2 hours lecture then I teach this course for 40, 40 hours I actually solve this problem. And then you will find that many books they talk about routing and in many books you must have found that this is the typical they have shown take a right turn, take a right turn, take a right turn, take a right turn, right. This is the problem of route, this is the issue of the routing. This is a right turn, always you should take right turn, all your international books is right turn. But in fact in India they should not be right turn because we drive on left side, okay. So if you are following an international book please do not follow this path. You should not take a right turn, in fact you should take a left turn because left turn is allowed to us, not the right turn. So when you are talking about left right turn in India that means you are actually crossing the traffic from the front. If you are taking left turn you are allowed to do that. Many problem many students or many teacher does not understand this because they are following international books or many Indian books also do not understand this so they have copied this. So basically you should not take right turn you should take a left turn because left turn is allowed in India. Little bit small thing but very interesting and sometimes they start designing it in the right right path method which is not correct. I just tell that thing also, okay. People, students become really interested in this and they start thinking, Achha, videsh mein tam lo left side. okay, okay. So that kind of interest, you know, they dwell by understanding these small things. Then I also, I talk about large and small trucks and I also tell them that if we are talking about segregation, dry, wet based, okay. So that means the transportation system will also become complicated. Why it will become complicated? Either I should have multiple trucks or I have sh should have a truck with multiple container. Otherwise, you know, th that problem will not be solved. And then my composting facility may be at X place and my disposal facility may be at Y place. So probably I need now two number of trucks or even three number. So sometime this segregation will complicate especially your transportation problem and the optimization of your route, etc. will be a little bit more difficult. Okay, so these things need to be told to the students and of course that is interesting too. And then I also show that what is a transfer station, basically there is no transfer station, I am directly taking it to the disposal site. If I have a transfer station, I am transferring in between. Yes, that is what transfer station is, you every one of you know it, right. I also tell them this cost numbers in terms of economics whether transfer station is viable or not, okay, because if you are going far, far away. 
okay that means transfer station is more economical but if you are very close your uh, your uh, disposal site is very close for example many of small cities there is no point of having transfer stations you know this is this is called a uh, distance break even distance after that transfer station will have a more logic than having a small trucks taking directly to waste to that it's a, it's a break even analysis it's a cost component because when you are having a transfer station you will have capital cost on that okay you know you know it but th that's need to be told to them that why we decide and how we decide socio economic problem cost issues then we talk about transformation or many of you will call it is a treatment and up to this point of course many will agree that why we need it if they don't need tell them a couple of things that okay we have to reduce volume etc it can produce some kind of energy that's why we need transformation that's the way you want it then i tell them why transform solid waste i tell them advantages capital cost etc generation of energy reduction of volume etc i skip this because you know it up front i don't have to tell you but this should be told to the students okay and then there are different methods physical chemical and biological methods that's what are used for transformation or you sometime you call treatment that's up to you guys it doesn't matter whatever you want to do or whatever your student want to understand and then what are different transformation method physical for example component separation volume reduction compaction for example okay and size reduction for example if i want to take my biological waste to a diester i have to reduce size right i cannot take the the larger component so these things i tell them little bit quickly and it's not so interesting also for many of them and then also chemical transformation combustion gasification and pyrolysis that the large the chemical transform then i ask what is combustion and i ask who is from chemical and then they change their branches i am not from chemical for today's class no i am not the you know, kids are different right so what is combustion controlled burning what is gasification in absence of oxygen okay what is gasification then limited supply of oxygen basically in combustion we oxidize it to complete final product co2 and h2o and so comes along with that and in gasification it's a partial oxidation that means you are converting solid fuel to a gaseous fuel we have a plant in pune who is from pune anyone from pune or in that area so we have a plant there for gasification right rochester chemical limited have you seen that no don't worry just see it some day actually that's interesting only one plant across the country and what is pyrolysis complete thermal destruction in the absence of oxygen what is the benefit of pyrolysis why do we do pyrolysis yes. gas as well as liquid fuel sometimes pyrolytic oil not energy intensive process but of course then if you are not producing enough energy you won't do it right but then for example many people are saying that for example plastic the pyrolysis could be a good choice you are converting it to a liquid fuel i do not know i do not so also please do not give them a sentimental answer what is the sentimental answer pyrolysis waste khatam anaerobic digestion biodegradable over combustion energy don't give that answers okay they are that's unfair to the students they give them realistic answer how much energy if i tell pyrolysis i also tell them okay it's not done in india there are different reasons for that energy intensive actually our waste is not segregated people have not find it interesting many places we tried it failed tell them a real story okay they are very intelligent you may be knowing that and today students are not our time student they have resources okay you you, you remember what uh, professor other day flip classes why flip classes because they know up front they don't need it what we are doing them so idea here is also have to be a realistic answer to their problem and telling the realistic stories otherwise what will happen paralysis to hota hai aap log kyun nahi karte ho they shouldn't come don't tell them because this has there are issues with paralysis there are issues with gasification there are numerous issue with combustion okay and then 
biological processes. I tell them upfront in many times that although I'm not necessarily the fan of biological processes, but I tell them the biological process is a good option for Indian waste. Ultimately, there is nothing to lose. Composting, good, doesn't happen 50% composting, okay. Anorbic digestion, produce some useful energy, that's still okay. Because why I'm saying there is nothing to lose? Because when I'm doing combustion, I am putting some kind of flue gases to the air and that sometimes are dangerous. That's probably is not a case with the anaerobic digestion. So I always say that biological processes is at least go go for Indian waste. Then I give a little bit of example of this physical processes and chemical and biological processes. Shear shredders, these are used to just shred your waste, right? You know what is shear shredder, right? If you are teaching, for example, different other courses, we ask, ask them to design different components. But because of this three hours thing, we don't do that. We, I don't do in my classes, I don't ask them to design something because it's too small of the time, right? So I just tell them this is shear shredder, basically if you have paper, plastic, etc., or some kind of basically you just, by using shear forces, you just shred it, okay? Then I also tell them what is a the trommel screen to segregate waste on the basis of size largely works for solid kind of waste. If it's liquid in nature, then this, this uh, screen will be choked. Little bit of idea what kind of different systems I, uh, we use. And you should also tell them that, you know, when we are having these systems, we have to use them in tandem. That means it's not only one, we use several of them, like integrated waste management. So that's what I tell them. This is what you tell to your students, by the way. Okay, I just uh, forget to ask this question. So. How do you teach? Is it by blackboard or is it by uh, PowerPoint or how do you do that? Okay, how many of you use PowerPoint? Quite a lot, right? And how many, how many of you or your institution just use blackboard? Combination. So combination is there. So, so combination I considered in PowerPoint. Okay, only blackboard. Only few, right? Okay, so it's changing everywhere, right? Okay. So, you know, what has happened with, uh, with this Blackboard versus PowerPoint training is, for example, this picture, right? I cannot draw it, actually. <coughs> if I have to draw it, it will take a lot of time. Or other day, initially, when I was a student, the professor will bring that chart, right? Big chart they will bring. Otherwise, it has become diff difficult to teach. So, so that means we are on more or less on the same page. You are also using PowerPoint. Air classifiers, if I have to, let's say, separate paper or lighter materials, even plastic, I can use air classifier. I pass my waste with high speed air. I increase the area, velocity comes down. The papers are separated, but other materials just settle down. Very simple technology. If you just see that this, this is also I tell the student and horizontal also as well as the vertical one. And then magnetic separator for magnetic materials, you pass it with a kind of conveyor belt. There are a couple of magnet, they, they extract the material which is magnetic in nature and the remaining falls down. And I do it second time also, little bit of more purity comes. You, you guys tell everything on this? So do you teach this also in the course? You said yeah. That's right? Yes. yes. Show us, show, show picture. But no, only picture because we, uh, to my knowledge, I don't know where actually it is working. Yeah, very interesting. It, it's not in many places, even not in Mumbai also, for them, for example. But I think the, uh, the interesting part is even if you show them this picture, that, that should be enough, no? No, they don't agree? Yeah, in, when I was a student, the, my, us, our teacher asked us, how many of you have seen railway track? So actually 50% of class, in the engineering I am talking about, 50% of students were not haven't seen a railway track. Now I think that's changed now. Yes? If you ask railway track, they will just, you put a YouTube and see railway track, right? Where is this, you know, in the railway track, there is a design of sleepers, etc. And it was very difficult to visualize too for many of us, because we haven't seen the railway track actually. So visualization and actually this mobile technology, etc., has helped us in many ways, right? But if you are asking that, probably you should show some uh, film on YouTube, actually. I do that. 
I not always show them or give them a link, send an email that this is a link you can see. That is the way because I think in, I do not think in Assam they are doing it. There is no magnetic separation happening probably. Yeah, I know that, that too also. As far as my knowledge is concerned, not. So it, but at the same time in YouTube you will find the very interesting films in which everything is there. So they can, you can show that part. Then I tell them what composting. You know, it's a very interesting technology, probably a more or less a free technology. I call it a free technology if you have space there. And you produce a material, humus material, which can be used a kind of kind of fertilizer. Um, you can call it a fertilizer or at least a soil stabilizer. Soil conditioner is the right term to use it. Okay. The if the C to N ratio, the nutrient, etc., is a little bit okay, so you can call it even a fertilizer. But the soil conditioner is the right term, right? So then many people, when I tell them this is composting, then they ask why do not we do composting, it is free. You understand what I am saying? Because I tell them it is more or less free technology, okay? And then they ask, agar free hai to karte kyo nahi, sir? Very simple question, right? Why do not we do it then? Transportation charges, Transportation charges will be there and what else? It takes around 365 days for uh, land should be available. Its duration, duration should not be 365, it will happen in a month sir, or two uh, months. For normal composting to take place yeah. uh, basically. Two months. In two to three months. Yeah, I would say in two months it will happen if you are you are optimizing the heat. No level. sir, uh, you, you are told that is a free uh, technology. So yeah. in case we are not optimizing it will take ah, you, time. I see what you are saying. But, uh, but I am saying by optimizing it just put try to control the temperature. Put some little bit of soil on the top of it. Okay, even if you open three months should be okay. Yeah, can achieve Then people ask why do not you do it then? It is? Okay, but even for compostable, we have 40% of our uh, solid which are compostable. Initial investment is required. Not not much. Not much. Very, very good. There is no. What else? Why do not we do it then? Sorted waste should be there. Okay. So, farming system is mainly depending upon the chemical fertilizer usage and all. So nobody is ready to do this uh, very nice, composting very nice. and all. Yeah, it's, it's, there are many issues with that. One issue is that our waste is not segregated. So along with that, we will get glass, we will get metal. Who wants, who the hell wants metal in, uh, in the agriculture field? There is no market actually. There is very, it's very, it, we have found that it's very difficult to find a proper market. And then our agriculture land is very far from cities. So then means there is a transportation of composting. And then sometimes we found the nutrient value is not so high. So I better not invest that much money in that terms. Okay, but nevertheless, this still is a viable option in many places. For example, if you have a small city, probably you are surrounded by agriculture land, etc. Market with respect to seasonal Market with respect to seasonal, so that's important point also. So these things need to be told to a student. Otherwise, they ask on you, you said it is free, but why are you are not doing it? At least free everyone can do, right? Sir, in Belgium it is practiced. Actually, yeah, I can selling... tell you that the composting is the most practiced technology across the India. Actually, they are uh, selling it uh, as a manual to the farmers, nearby farmers in uh, banks. Okay, so how much you are charging? I think uh, 30 rupees, something like that. How much? No, 30 rupees, I think. 30 I think rupees for what? Uh, I need to cross check uh, the uh, rates for that. Manual, 30 rupees for 100 kilo, after, 1 ton? Uh, no. In bags, I am talking. For 100 kg? 30 paisa? No, no, not 30 paisa. In terms of rupees, I need to cross check. But uh, what we have seen is that composted material can be used as a manure. Uh, actually, uh, these Ramki and Miro engineers, they are. Uh, no, no, I am not denying it. That's what I said. It's free technology and it's, it's produced compost. They are following this but uh, method. I am also, ta I should, I talk to my students about the challenges also. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, that's another point also. It's a social issue also. That, oh, kya hai isme waste? You're bringing waste from every city to my uh, farm. Why should I take it? And you will find that even we are doing segregation, na? there will be some kind of plastic, etc. So I am not denying it, but I tell the students the issues also. 
Okay, that means why it is not the obvious choice in many ways. Pathogens are there if I can maintain little bit high temperature, pathogens generally goes, but certainly there are pathogens. Basically, I do not want to bring cities problem to my farm. That is the main uh -huh. critical Hello. point. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, city of Indore is associated with composting. Yeah. Where the first time in 1930, uh -huh. Indore method of composting was adopted. Uh -huh. And in those days, because uh, dry latrines were there, so night soil along with the solid waste was being arranged in the layers and the top was covered with the soil cover and the period was two to three months. Very good. So I think what I should do is probably glance all my slides and then we can discuss probably, right? That's better way. Yes? Yeah, otherwise it's probably we, we won't end of my presentation any day. <laughs> but I understand you have real problems and real issues and that's what need to be told to the students. So then yes. after that I... Hello, sir. Sir, why vermi composting is not getting any encouragement? Yeah, I will talk about vermi composting right now. Okay. Let's, let, let's talk first and then I will tell you why, okay? Thank you. So, and then I also tell what advantages, okay? I just skip this and then different types of composting, conventional, conventional the one, windrow composting and vermi composting and then rotary. So this is, I give you an example of windrow composting. Basically you make a windrow, right? Okay. And you know, sometimes there is this inter interesting designs also. Have you, if you go to any book, you will find interesting designs also. So I generally do not go in this class for telling all these designs. And I also tell what rotary drum composting. What is rotary drum composting? Yeah, we are circulating, it's a closed system, we can maintain the temperature. Yeah, I mean, those waste which can be composted in open down, compost, it can also be composed rotary drum. That's what I tell them, okay? So again, rotary drum composting is a little bit expensive, but at the same time, it's faster. You were saying three months, we can finish it in, let's say, three weeks. Rise in temperature and even I can control order problem also. And because it's mixed, right, it's circulated. So what happens is the, re the reaction is a little bit faster. Okay, it's a closed system. It's a more control I have it. No, it's aerobic. Yeah, it's just 20, 30 percent filled and I allow even air to pass, natural circulation. Okay, so I also tell about this and I also tell about vermi composting. What is vermi composting? Yeah. Everyone knows warming composting, right? And we do, I also tell them warming composting and to make it a little bit interesting, I tell them these bombs are not free. They cost a lot. Do you know how much they cost? How much they cost? No cost? No, yeah. It may, if it's, if it's free in Chennai, send us some. How much when you know, actually everyone? If they are free in, free from Tamil Nadu, come to? Salem, it, if it's free in Salem, send, send me some. If they are free in Salem. Which one, sir? This one. Uh, Eero, which is available, sir. Yeah. Eero, which is available. But the cost is very low. Hmm. So even when we are not. Uh, so which one you said? This Eugene? Utilis Eugene, yes, sir. It's, it's free? Uh, exotic, exotic, no? I thought it, it is coming from uh, Africa, sir. Africa. Africa, sir. But it costs 1000 rupees He's per kg. Chinese firm, sir. Yeah. So usually the biodiversity concern, no? Mm -hmm. So we have to use the indigenous species, sir. So we have to do this uh, vermi composting mm -hmm. in the local or otherwise in the indoor method. Is Very nice. Can use, sir. So basically what sir, I tell them. disturbing our yeah, biodiversity. Yeah, I, I, I understood. So what I tell them is that the worms which are everywhere in rainy season, the local one, they are not that efficient. So to make it little bit faster, we have to have these species brought from Africa and China, etc. They are not Indi Indian indigenous. To make it faster, right? And they cost a little bit. Someone told me it's 1000 rupees per kg. 500? Yeah, a little bit. You are doing a business now. Okay, 500. Okay, he, he, he will sell you in 500, I will sell in 1000 rupees. Okay, so there is a cost involved, but nevertheless, vermi composting has been a, a decent technology for some times. Basically, they eat your food and make a material which is good for soil, soil conditioner and 
I don't know whether it can be called a fertilizer. Vermicomposting has been a success. I don't know. It's a one time. So, once you buy, for example, one kilo, no? they will grow. Yeah. So, I told you it's just for making it interesting to tell them you are not free. Rate of proliferation is more. Rate of? Yeah. Proliferation rate is more. More. Yeah, they are little really faster. Uh, yes, you can sir. tell them all technical terms. I used to tell you they are faster, quicker. Yes, excretion is very fast ok so see idea is to make student understand your problem but at the same time make it interesting also ok make it technical at the same time make it interesting move ahead then anaerobic digestion waste to energy good idea or bad idea good idea Good idea. Good idea. Okay, many of you are doing probably it will say good idea. Okay, I tell that you know we have an or food based or biodegradable waste and we convert it into some useful energy. We produce biogas and some kind of residue which actually can be used as a compost. Yes, the residue can be used as a compost. That is what I tell them, and I also tell them this one compo gas. Remember this compo gas is a I think Denmark based or European company which has uh, which is doing this anaerobic digestion. I asked them to stay on this slide for one minute. Just try to understand it. So you should also spend 30 seconds then because your process is faster. It is nothing but basically anaerobic digestion and what they are saying is that whatever is generated that can be used. So basically they are saying it is a closed system. You are generating biogas which can be used for energy generation. You are producing liquid which can use a liquid fertilizer. Okay, this is a company in the Europe. Okay, then many of you or many of your students will find it how much energy I can generate? That is a simple question, right? If we can generate by anaerobic digestion, once you tell them this is the process, there are two types of single phase and uh, two chamber system where you can have methanogenesis and it has to tell them whatever you think is appropriate for them ok. But then they ask them how much energy we can generate that is very important question right how much. So I tell them I, have, I show them this slide which basically tells that and this is an experiment done by a company which may not be that correct but it does not matter which says that if I have 150 tons per day production of waste which can produce you 1.2 megawatt of power. So now I ask them to calculate how much energy can we produce for Mumbai. But because many of you are not from Mumbai, so may I ask you to calculate how much energy can be produced in your city. Can you do the, do the calculation quickly if it is 1.50 tons per day you are producing 1.2 megawatt of electricity equivalent. If it is what is your waste generated in your city? How much energy you can produce? So tell me who who is from Delhi? Noida. You are from Delhi? Noida. Okay. So how much energy we can produce in Delhi, madam? No, you just calculate by using this method. <laughs> don't don't tell me the numbers <laughs> just like that because you know it, right? They are using. They have three plants in Delhi now. I need to know what is the total waste generated in okay. Noida. Uh, do you know what is the total waste generated in your city? Well, no, it is 5.6 megawatt because it is about 700 tons per day. Very nice, 5.6 megawatt. What could be the total energy or electricity consumption in your city? Any guess? 1000 megawatt equivalent? Uh, 5000 no, At least for my water supply scheme, yeah. Narmada project, yeah. in uh, water comes 70 kilometers away from river Narmada Maheshwar mm -hmm. to Indore. And for that, uh, 1 crore per month they are paying as electricity charges. Okay. Wow. So that much I can inform. Okay. So I do not know, but you, I tell them that calculate how much electricity is consumed by a city and how much waste you are generating and out of that how much electricity you can produce and tell me in terms of percentage how much it is, how big this number is. Okay. So by, uh, when we are talking about generation of energy, are we saying that we are transitioning our cities? Is it significant or it is not significant? So, how many of you think it is significant? Significant? 
Anything coming out of it? Yeah, that, that's another question. There are two questions. Anything coming from, from nothing is yes, yes. But the question, another question is, is it a good number? Is it significant or not? Also, you are avoiding the pollution by the... No, no, I understood that. That's there. But is it significant in terms of energy production or not? Yes. Yes. So, kids are actually fighting for uh, 50 megawatts. Uh, from the state, uh, central pool actually for 50 megawatt i don't think so no uh, states are basically fighting for energy from the central pool these days so if a, a state, single city can produce 56 megawatts means what about but the remember other this cities? is mumbai the largest city yeah not just where mumbai. are you from i am from kerala which city kochi kochi uh, how much waste probably you are generating what is Around the population 3000 3,000? Maximum. No, no, no. Not even 1,000. In Kochi, it's 200. Per day. Per day. Almost less than 300. 200, 300. So, that means 5 megawatt. So, is it 5 megawatt significant for your city or not? No, uh, if you just take Kochi, it's okay. Uh, but if you are uh, thinking about Calicut, thinking state. about. Uh, thinking about okay, uh, so this kind know. of answer you will get every time, right? Very interesting. Many say it's no, it's good. Many say okay, so I thought it was too much, but it's too less. Okay, so this kind of question is will come. So basically, the idea here is to give them a real picture, to tell them it's just one percent probably or even less than that, but still it's okay, right? If I am getting, I my salary is one lakh rupees. If I am getting one thousand rupees extra for doing little bit extra work. And probably even no work, right? I was sleeping, instead of sleeping, I start working. Something like that, because sleeping is important, so forget sleeping. But something like that, if I get little bit extra work and extra money, it's not bad, right? Is it bad? No? That's same with this. I am reducing my waste, I am reducing the impact on the environment in different ways. I am producing energy, which probably is not more than 1%, still it's okay. Okay, do, the whole idea is do not tell them the energy scenario will change. Of course, it won't. But still, I am using, generating useful energy. I am reducing my waste, which otherwise is going to landfill and creating other kinds of air and water problems. That is the whole idea. Okay. So, the point here is the realistic answer. Then, incineration, thermal road. Many of you say, especially the people from Delhi, Noida says that incineration is a nice way. Incineration is a good technology or bad technology? Who said good? Not feasible. Bad? Even if it's feasible, it's bad or good? So, inorganic waste, there is no calorific value. No, okay, hospital waste is another, but like municipal waste. Actually, we are pumping carbon into the atmosphere. Yeah, but that carbon is carbon neutral. Okay, good, good, good idea. Why? Because we can stand near to that. <laughs> okay, so you have to tell them that what is basically incineration. It's complete combustion. These are the typical types of incinerator we use great kind of incinerator. I do not tell them what other technologies because there are numerous technologies. And I also tell them that, so this, this is the question I keep on asking students. Many developed countries, when I say developed countries, for example, US, they haven't used or they haven't, they are very engaged waste to energy systems, even incinerators. Carbon issue, if you see what carbon, huh, it creates carbon neutral actually. Hello, sir. Because so yeah. th this system may be good for uh, disposing this biological waste, uh, bio biomedical waste. But not for this, not for our simple municipal solid waste, right? Yes, sir. Why? Actually, we are not generating anything from that uh, municipal solid waste. Uh, because the calorific waste. value of Indian MSW is pretty low. It certainly may not, in many cases, generate useful energy. Okay, and then there are what the issues about the which pollution? Air pollution. Right? That is the biggest problem. Moisture, you have to have a supplementary fuel. 
you have to have supplementary fuel that's there but even the more concern is about the air pollution okay so then i tell them little bit about air pollution it's not simply the what professor sethi tells but i little bit about the specific issues and what are the specific issues with the incinerators sir uh, i had one doubt hmm? yes so in cold climate countries hmm. temperature will be very low hmm. i don't know whether uh, biological treatment will work or no uh, means you may be knowing that the most of biological treatment is used in cold climate conditions uh, means temperature less than zero. they maintain the temperature yeah because uh, i have not uh, if you have insulation in denmark germany they are using anaerobic digestion a lot because they can maintain it so you insulate the system no? heating insulation thank you okay i tell about them what the emissions i tell them that there will be heavy metals there will be particulate matters there will be inorganic gases there will be dioxin and furon do you know what is di dioxin and furons plastic any kind of chlorinated material if you burn it you certainly end up having dioxin i sensitize it a lot i tell them if you are burning plastic in open probably in the northern part of india where there is a cold place you are exposed to dioxin and furon i don't know how you do it but that should be told actually that's very very critical right many of you you may be knowing dioxin and furon it's very dangerous compound most toxic compound one of most toxic compound ever invented by human okay and then i tell them what are the different pollution you talk about effluent etc i keep on telling that basically incineration can produce some energy but then we are talking about different types of pollution and why it's not even used in many of 12 countries us is one example because of the issues of dioxin and furons and then i ask them to read a book by rachel carlson silent spring no one reads it but it's no harm to ask no i'm talking about student not you yeah you must have read it i tell them to read it you know and some some students 1 to 2% find it interesting they start reading it rachel carlson book is very interesting actually so then i little bit tell them what is dioxin and furon and then also you should also tell them that even those can be controlled it's ready to temperature then i tell them this is the chemical structure of dioxin and furons and now the modern waste to energy systems or even incinerators who was telling incinerator this is what they look like okay so i asked them what did you notice in this picture that's the same question i ask you guys what did you notice emissions which are emitting after incineration they are treated with wet scrubber and esp or back filter methods very nice so basically i tell them that you know the modern waste to energy systems are not like our old system the combustion doesn't mean just i burn it i tell them it's what air pollution control devices and 60% of the money 60% of total capital cost actually is for air pollution control devices so those cities those countries who are useful generating useful energy out of it they are not polluting air they have they are doing it in a city center in denmark it's in city center okay in 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 uh, taiwan they are doing in city center but they are having air pollution control devices they have online monitoring system actually you can see on your computer you can see on your mobile that what are the pollution coming from the incinerator which is next to my house okay and remember this will cost us a lot but it's controlling all kind of air pollution problems so this thing also need to be tell that that means we cannot be biased towards one technology because we don't like it personally okay you have to tell this also that this is a, and why the issue is with indian condition so far or indian because if we do not follow the if we do not have air pollution control devices ultimately we are creating more problems forget about 2 megawatt 3 megawatt we actually are end up having air pollution problem which is much much severe than just having a solid waste management problem so that's the concern for india okay so far so good okay and then gasification 
you know, it's very similar to incineration, what we are doing partially oxidation, you can tell, show, show this picture also. And then I come to disposal. What is disposal? <laughs> it's very? The waste uh, coming after our treatment. Yeah. Again, it has to be disposed. To be disposed, whatever remaining waste actually. Yeah. But in India, all of our waste is disposed. Directly, Directly or indirectly. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you want to see something else? No, no. Yeah. And in many times, in many, in the, in the previously they said that we can put into sea also. Good idea or bad idea? Why sea is so big? You put anything. That's our tradition. Sab kuch ganga mein dal do. No? Accumulate in fish? We don't eat fish. We vegetarian. We vegans. Amir Khan said now he's a vegan now. I don't know what a vegan means. They don't even drink milk. Huh? So the ecosystem of the water body will be spoiled. The ecosystem of the water body Very will nice. Be Very nice. So basically and the photosynthetic rate inside uh, the sea I, I see will be reduced. You should make this point to the students that you know it's good to solve your problem. Do not give your problem to fish. Means by that, do not destroy the whole ecosystem because you cannot manage the waste. So, this sea dumping is largely no no in the developed world. Open dumping, but what we are doing in India so far, largely, someone said that it is not 100%, but largely we are open dumping. That need to be stopped in future. Then I say, why landfill, you know, people little bit of example, it can generate emissions. If I am doing open dumping, that means I am telling about the sanitary landfill. And I also show what means sanitary landfill means, because I am skipping many of slides, because this is a common, very basic slide. You know, it, it, I am not teaching you, I am just telling it what I teach. Please remember this. Sir, okay. I need to ask one question. Yeah, please ask. In the landfill, uh, what is happening in uh, Delhi Noida area nowadays, yeah. that the heavy metals are getting uh, leached into the uh, water table. Yeah. So, what do you think about the sanitary landfill and uh, the landfills that we are using? Very good. So, what do you think, guys? I think uh, Madam is talking about Okla landfill, if yeah. I am correct. Okay. Exactly, if I am talking. So, many of the people, if uh, nowadays we want to visit, uh, first, we'll be visiting Okla landfill, if I'm correct, <laughs> Delhi. So, uh, uh, what is the other round is, uh, if this is going to continue in an uh, unmanaged way, hmm. might be uh, the other foreigners might be visiting Delhi for seeing how we are managing. Uh, that is a question. I, uh, the second one is, uh, we can go for liners. Uh, Many of you are becoming researchers now. That's very interesting, but that's not a part of this course. Uh, we can go for double liner systems. Yeah, uh, we can go triple liner also, but that will cost us a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I understood your question, so madam. I, I, will answer, I will answer it. So basically, you know what is a sanitary landfill, right? It's a liner system, your leachate collection system. And by the way, your open dumping will always have this problem. If you are open dumping your waste, your leachate will be generated, no one can stop it. If you are putting your waste somewhere, if the rain comes into that, the material will leach. And if it leach, it simply the first thing it will go to surface water and if it percolates, it will go to ground water. No one in the world can stop it. Open dumping will always have a problem of ground water contamination, of course, and also surface, this surface emissions. If you have a sanitary landfill, if you have property sanitary landfills, you know what is sanitary landfill. It is a liner system. It has a compacted clay. Basically, there are a couple of layers which won't allow this, shouldn't allow this water to flow to groundwater, provided you have a proper leachate collection system which is properly designed. Okay, there is no magic. But what has happened even if you have liners, for example, you are saying about liner. The liners are also very interesting. And you know these rats, rodents, they are also very interesting. So why did I say that? This rodent has this long teeth, right? You see in the rodents, there are longer teeth. And they need to be, they have to cut something. If they don't cut, they probably die. 
So they need to cut every time. You know, it's not about food. It's not that because they're eating our liner. So many times this rodent will cut those liner also. And there is some kind of their minimum molecular diffusion happening through this liner. You cannot stop that. That's as per the science. And the interesting part is about the operation and how you have laid them. They are basically synthetic material. You put a nail, start leaking. And the very interesting example I give to everyone is, it's only for male, please excuse the females. When you go to washroom to urinate, what is the first concern? If it's not good hotel or five star or lodge house. Because that urine can fall on your, on your trouser. Why? Because the pipe is leaking. You didn't notice that? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes? Why it is that? I spend one lakh rupees having this beautiful toilet, but the person who is doing the maintenance, he probably charges 200 rupees, he has not put the pipe properly. It always leaks. And I put the same analogy for our liners. You have spent lakhs, lakh rupees, you have very high quality G material, but if it is not put properly, if it is not attached from one line to another, it certainly will leak. And no one can stop it. So, madam, your noida wala problem, na? it's better to buy a house somewhere else. I'm joking, though. <laughs> they don't go. You know that groundwater contamination, if it is happening at 100 km away, probably you are your groundwater is contaminated in another oh, place. Sir. Yeah. We normally go to the yeah. Only after having so many years open dumping and open burning, yeah. then only we go for implementation of the sanitary landfilling. Mm -hmm. Even for Kaimutu city that is happening. Yes. They are having about 700 acres land for the disposal of solid waste. Mm -hmm. For the 15-20 years they have gone for open land dumping, already the groundwater got contaminated. Now they are going for the sanitary landfills. So you, you said why they are doing it or what, what are you saying? I don't know. What's, what's that? Actually, this is not the problem because of the sanitary landfill after the current uh, formation of sanitary landfill, it has been started a little earlier. Yeah, I know, but at least still they are doing something. So, you should be happy for that. Because the problem already is happening. Even assume if they do not do it even today, it will more contamination, but at least they are doing it at least. So, that is okay. Okay, so it is all about all these issues. The gentleman who said double liner is actually a good idea, except that it will cost a little bit more. But it's a foolproof system. That's why you know for your biomedical waste, hazardous waste, we use double liner system. At least the second liner system is a control. But then it's a question of the cost also. You know, it, this system doesn't come free. How much is the cost of uh, waste disposal or proper treatment facility? If I should have a total engineered landfill, <laughs> biomethanation plant, segregation, RDF, what do you what do you think? What could be the cost? If I ask you for Per unit cost, that means for each kilogram of waste I properly manage scientifically, what do you think will be the cost? 1 rupees per kg, 2 rupees per kg, 5 rupees, 10 rupees, 20 rupees. Less than? Less than 1 rupees for having an engineering landfill, biomethanation plant, etc. Having an integrated waste facility? Less than 1 rupees. Which technology will do it in less than one rupee? Any guess? Yeah, I think the cost of land should accept la cost of land. Cost of land will is a variable, big variable. In addition to the cost of land. Any guess? 2025. 2025 what? No, uh, 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 that's a little bit too much. But around five to ten rupees per kg. 5 to 10 rupees per kg for the proper management of MSW. Sometime I get tomato in 10 rupees per kg. Yes? Say yes. Not in general in Mumbai, but in once in blue moon. Elsewhere else probably you get quite often, right? But I can tell you the cost of this treatment, disposal, etc. is proper management I am talking about is in the range of 10 rupees per kg. Okay, so that need to be also told to the students as well as to the policy maker. Does it does not include transportation cost. So, if you add 2, two rupees more, 12, 15 rupees. That is really expensive, right? But that is the truth. I also show this landfill bottom. This is a liner system. It is probably visible on this little bit of 
making it more interesting. Then cell liner, basically this is the liner I am talking about, high density polyethylene material, okay. It is a good idea you put it in the bottom so that your leachate problem which is generated in cities that should not go to the groundwater. And on the top of that you put a leachate collection system, okay. But this is what I am mentioning, if there are cuts into this, if there is some kind of leakage, your whole problem, your whole this costing of a few crore rupees gone because it will leach. Then leachate collection system I show through them, show a little bit of these pictures, how the landfill is working. I also show them that what is the right way, for example, I am taking waste today, it may rain in the evening, right? So you have to put some kind of soil covering every day. So that means some kind of soil covering should be there after once your the cells are over, you basically put in different cells, you should fill it with the final cover, that means two feet of soil. And by the way, this soil also, this is a clay soil, right? This will also cost you, okay? So what is the best way then? Do not produce waste. Once you produce it, you have started the problem, you have started the cost issues, you have started all kinds of problems. Reduce, okay? This is about gas collection system and I also tell them about some kind of activity happening there. And I also, it not, may not be that visible for you guys, but I will show you this, what is the leachate, right? It is highly contaminated wastewater, even more, much more than our municipal wastewater. It will have heavy metals, what you are saying, madam, that will be there, you cannot stop them, okay? So, what do you think, what can be done in Noida? Um, there was a um, talk in IIT Delhi about all these things mm. in the RDT department. Which and, department? Uh, RDT, Rural? Rural Development Technology. Mm. And um, they said that they have developed some worms which can eat away the heavy metals, you know. Uh, yeah, I do not know about that worm, but there could be some technologies which can take yeah, out so, the material. Out of so they have been working upon it and they say that 70% of the heavy metals uh, can be, you know, extracted. I think, well, that's, that could be a good idea, but I think it will work in the small scale, but large scale it could be really, really complicated. Think of a few thousand tons of waste, thousand square meter. How many bombs you want to put uh, there? No, but they first analyze the waste uh, and accordingly they uh, put the amount of worms that, that are required. Yeah, but it's on an experimental stage, right? Yeah. Okay. To control the leaching problem, yeah. first we have to take care of the site where we are uh, making the landfills. Hmm. Unless that's the ground is not watertight, there are aquifuse, aquiclude formations. Soil cover followed by such strata which are non-porous, non-permeable in nature. So if we go for making dumping of the solid waste in these areas, there will be no chances of percolating or leaching of Very the good. solid metals Very in the groundwater. So basically what is the problem here is you are researchers, you are not students. You always find a research angle in everything. That is not happening with the students, right? I, I appreciate what you are saying. So we have basically, we have to do basic EIA. Make sure we find a proper site. That there should be a proper, the groundwater should be low. There are different conditions for doing that. Okay, so, so that's okay. I understand that. But, you know, this is very interesting, but because we cannot tell everything to, to student in two, three hours. So I don't go on EIA kind of things. Okay, that's another interesting part that how to select your sites what should be the ground level, how far it should be from locality, communities, municipality, etc. We can do that, but not in this course. And once you close the site, what do you do? Grow beautiful trees, make a garden. Yes, monitor it for 15, 30 years as per government of India's MSW rules. It should be monitored for 15 years. Actually in the 12 country, they should say it should be monitored for 30 to 40 years, okay? Children can play there, right? Yes? But remember, if it is not properly managed and if you have different types of waste, many times you put hazardous waste into that, it can create a problem. It's not a good idea. I don't think it, we should use this for garden purpose, etc. We can have it further used for landfilling again. We take out the waste and again make it a landfill rather than using it for some other purpose because our systems are not that robust. Remember this. But nevertheless, we can do that. Okay, how much land is required? So if you can calculate for your city, 
that would be wonderful. Can you calculate how much land is required for your city for, for next 10 years? If I use this kind of hypothesis, I give you two minutes. You may be knowing that, you know, in Mumbai, this MCGM is struggling a lot with finding a proper landfill site. Okay, because there is no land actually. And no one, it's, do you know this NIMBY issue? Not in my backyard. No one wants landfill near to any place. No one wants it, right? So could you calculate it for your city? Yes, no? Okay. You know, this is another way of sensitizing it and tell to student do some kind of calculation. And sometime I tell the student this will come in the exam. And 90% of the time it comes in the exam. And still 80% of students cannot do it because they never tried it. They didn't trust me in the class. Sometimes I tell them these are 10 questions I will ask exam. And I ask 5 out of it. Still people have B, B, C, C grades. Yes? Have you, have you, have you noticed that? If you tell students this is a 10, 10 question I will ask in exam. And even if you are 10, still you will find that the grading has happened. Legal framework, you know, everyone of knows legal framework. I just cover a very small component of legal framework. I tell them there are rules, MSW 2000 rules, they are likely to be amended very soon. And I also tell them the, what is the responsibility of municipalities and what is the responsibility of individual citizens. And I slowly tell them that no one is following the rules. So there is no much point in talking about the rules which are no one is following so far, neither municipality nor none of us. Okay? Oh, someone was telling me hierarchy, waste management hierarchy, right? That's what I also tell them. That reduce, reuse, recycle, waste energy, then ultimately the bare minimum should go to the landfill. I also tell them 3R, reduce, reuse and recycle. I don't want to tell you what is reduce, reuse and cycle because you know it. But sometimes you should tell the student that what are the advantages of reducing, reusing and cycle. Give them some beautiful examples. I also tell them that if I am reusing my, not using but recycling my aluminum cane, this Coca Cola cane, versus if I am producing the virgin aluminum from the, from the ores or from the mine, the energy use is 10 versus 100. So if I have to produce it new, new aluminum ore, I have to use 100 units of electricity. If I am recycling it, I just use 10 or even less than that units. So how important how we are first of all saving material in recycling and reusing. We also are saving energy. We also are saving money. That need to be told to students in your different ways. But what is reduce, reuse cycle, most of your students will be knowing. But sometimes it doesn't hurt to tell them a little bit of interesting story. Okay? That's what I told in the beginning. My class is all about stories. Benefits of recycling, I tell them sometimes, a little bit slowly, don't spend much of time on this. I also tell them what is happening in the developed countries. Because, you know, people are, it's a global world, right? People always want to know that what is happening in the different parts of the world. I also tell them that, you know, they are moving away from landfilling, but still landfilling is dominant there. There is a lot of recycling, recycling continuously decreasing, and incineration is more or less steady. It's not increasing, not decreasing, and it's for 32 major European countries. Okay, these things I keep on telling them, and then what we are doing in India, it's not a very accurate number. We I do not know the authenticity of this, but largely we are open dumping, very small amount we are composting. There are a few four or five waste energy plants in different places. I do not know personally whether they are working nicely or not. You will find different stories by the different people. In the news, you will find that this plant is not working, that plant is not working. There is a issue. Who is from Hyderabad? So you, you have this RDF plant in Hyderabad, right? RDF, RDF plant in Hyderabad? Refuse derived fuel plant? Yeah, it is. You are from Hyderabad also? I am not from Hyderabad. I am from Mitchellganji, Kolapur district. Hmm. In Mitchellganji city, we are also going to adopt this technology, RDF system. Which technology? That, that uh, Selco defect technology? Uh, no, whatever the this, uh, rubbish materials hmm. we are going to directly use for to uh, compressing all these things or we are making the bales and yeah. send them here into the industry. Yeah, very nice. So, yeah, so basically some industries have, uh, some uh, municipality has RDF system. 
basically they are segregating waste and then making this paper, plastic and some kind of wood material etc. as a fuel, sending it to some kind of cement factory and sometime burning to produce energy. Yeah, Hyderabad is one example, I think there is another couple of more cities. Vijayawada, Vijayawada has that. I also tell about them mechanical biological treatment system where this basically this is kind of system which need to be used for larger cities. You know when we are talking about 7000 plus tons of waste like Mumbai, we are not talking about small waste to energy facility which will take 2 ton, 1 ton, 3 ton. 7000 ton is means that means we need 7000 facilities similar to that. That is not going to happen. For larger cities like Mumbai etc., you need tremendous big systems which are continuous working controlled by SCADA automated systems, take lot of waste, all machines working automatically, that is the only way. Or if you have land, then you use decentralized facilities, right? Otherwise, you need all kind of sophisticated systems. I sometimes tell about that component to them and after that, I show them a video, 7 minutes film which is from YouTube, I show it to them. Unfortunately or fortunately, I do not think I have, okay, so this, this is an interesting picture. Can you see that? Yes, can you see that from there? Okay, the guy who is doing somersault and then I, I ask them to write a caption on this. I do not know whether you can see it from the bottom. Okay, to make it a little bit more interesting, you can also write a caption. It is taken in, I do not know where and then this one, what is this child thinking? And whose responsibility is this actually? For example, someone was telling me that hum log kya kare? how we are related, you know. I do not think that uh, the people have, the student have this kind of feeling because they know that it is related to us, right. This is very interesting, right. You can see from there, if I have to throw it outside my window, it is free. If I have to give it to someone, I, it cost me. So, which one is a better option in terms of economy? First one, okay. But then, Seti Sir said, who is human, being human? Kona human? So, which option is better now? Second, Second option, okay. It is not all about money. We are, we, every one of us are not only here for earning money. That is not the sole objective, right? Then probably not teaching, then probably some other business or some other thing would have been better, right? Every one of us do not just want to earn money. We also have some social responsibility. We are good human also, right? So the second option is better then. Minimization will take place automatically. When we are using second option, of course. If we become responsible, that certainly is the second option we always become. I After that, I generally take quiz. It happens a little bit in different manner in my classes because we take quiz after two, three lectures, right? So what I will do it during this program because remember you all of your coordinator, I will ask for these quizzes. I will segregate them a little bit more. For example, the two, three numerical I asked you to solve, how much waste generated. I will certainly ask again when I am taking those lectures and you have to make them. I think you, you can solve it, right? It's very simple one. And what will happen is, for example, how much waste is generated in your city? So, the people may not be knowing. So, during the break, etc., you ask them to use their mobile, etc., or maybe next day they should bring the answer. It is a little bit of more, what do you call that, inside. It is not I go and come, I just little bit think a little bit. Because once they start searching what is happening in their city, they will also know that what their city is doing. Yes? So it is good to ask those kind of questions to students and also to the teachers. It is bring you a little bit inside your city. Many times I ask to my students, okay, from where our water is coming? What is the source of water? Answer is one person will tell, yes sir, I know. I saw that in XY did it. Others know, they don't know from where our water is coming in IIT, IIT campus. Okay, so that kind of sensitization I also do. The only thing which I couldn't cover here, unfortunately, is the biomedical based. So I will just glance the slides, I will just show you the slides, okay, and then tell you that this is what I do generally. So uh, I am sorry there is not enough time for this, but let us, sh I show you the slides, okay. But by the way, in that class, I will try to explain that too. So definition, what is biomedical based, okay, 
What is infectious waste and what is non-infectious waste? What is the status in India? How much is generated? This I skipped there only, same because. Then here I talk more about rules. Because biomedical waste rules are generally followed in India, by the way, you may be knowing. Because that's hazardous, it is hazardous in nature. So I talk a little bit more about rules because there are this color container, etc., etc. I pay a lot of attention on rules here. Okay, what, how do we manage it? What are the categories as per rules? Seven category based. And what are the different types of containers? Color coding, color coding I tell them. Then different treatment options, incinerators, you know, every one of you know that incineration is a good technology or much better technology for biomedical waste. Then why there are two chambers, what should be the temperature, operating standards. I think you also do the same thing, right? More or less? Yeah. Emission standard. Microwaving, what is microwave technology? Autoclaving, what is autoclaving? Irradiation, irradiations, plasma pyrolysis, deep burial only for small cities. And then I stop here. Again, they have to write a caption. So, this is how I deal with this course. Okay. So you can also insist something on the leachate treatment. In the leachate treatment in the solid waste. Yeah, but that's a very good idea. I think why I didn't cover it because in my comp this thing, there is a wastewater treatment we are teaching. So they emphasis it there. We have been practiced with uh, open dumping. Yeah. You can tell them something on uh, landfill capping also. Landfill capping. capping. Okay. That's one, one thing. Yeah. And uh, if it is this uh, contaminated site, you can tell them something on like uh, landfill remediation also. Right? Landfill remediation. But you know, the problem is because I just have three hours. Yeah. And uh, another thing is this landfill mining also. Landfill mining. I tell them a little bit. I tell them that how they are trying to solve in Mumbai. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Leachate treatment with respect to uh, physical, chemical, and biological, we can touch upon. Yeah. And uh, here you and you have uh, uh, mentioned something about RDF that is also now shooting up. Yeah. And uh, we have been practiced with only uh, open dumping operations. We can tell them like uh, landfill capping also if it is possible. Yeah. And uh, we have been practiced with so many years with uh, open dumping operations, but we can tell something on landfill remediation if it is possible. And uh, if it is anything on post closure, we can also tell something on post closure monitoring also. That is yeah. this one mandatory. And now is the catchy word is on landfill mining. That yeah, is that's another. a new new word. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Another thing is, is we can also tell them like uh, cogeneration plants, not only WTE. We can tell them is on cogeneration plants with respect. Cogeneration. Yeah. And uh, the uh, another important thing is is uh, the uh, yeah uh, some of the uh, yeah post closure monitoring and some of the latest developments in the. Yeah. Uh, Very good. I think the concern which many of you may also will have when you are teaching this course is you have to deviate from the core course always, right? I, I do not want to just focus on 55 minutes on the course. I have to take a little bit of interesting stories also. Because otherwise, students lose interest. You agree with me, no? If I don't tell them five stories in my class, no one listens to me. I have to talk about cricket, I have to talk sometime about films, I have to talk about Amir Khan. That's reality, right? We cannot concentrate for very long hours. Ultimately, are they are sitting for six hours in a day, right? If I make my class just technical, they don't listen to me. So I make it a little bit interesting. So I have I generally intentionally spend approximately five to ten minutes on telling something which has no meaning in terms of class to make it more interesting. And then I have largely for 55 minutes class, I just have 45 minutes to teach the real thing, right? And then I have just three lectures on this. If I want to add more, then probably I have to squeeze and do it faster. For example, what I am doing here, I just have to move faster. That's not a very good way of teaching. So what we have thought is teach them where minimum. And you know, these students are very intelligent, right? And then once we sensitize, we tell them the real picture, 
they can now think little bit and if they want to read something else, for example, land mining, I just mentioned one line. I mentioned that in Mumbai, in, we have no land now, now there are projects coming that how to take that waste out of the cities and bring that land back to the landfill site. Excuse me, sir. Second reclamation, yeah. So, so that kind of things need to be done. But this is again a challenge. I don't know about how you guys, how you do it, because this is for us is just four or five lectures and actually I cover a little bit on greenhouse gases, also, climate. Also, a challenge to go around the campus to take a photograph of what is the scenario. Yeah, that we do. And we have this NSS, probably you have also. There are many volunteer students coming out of that. And they can go for... Uh, Better we can have a site visit. Yeah, so okay, so let's take talk about how to run this course when you are working as coordinator, that what can be added further or what can be reduced or what can be done or should we have more quiz. Okay, so site visit, of course, that's, that's there, but that's for a real teaching. How about, yeah, how about for this? So we have given them the form, feedback form. If you can take, because you have very good points, I take it at least for my class, if not for this course, Sorry. but can you just note it down? Uh, write it please so that we can see it One after. more thing, yeah. uh, you are mentioning about the area requirement for the landfills, yeah. it's very high. Yeah. And for the Kaimadu city, I have calculated, it comes around 10.5 yeah. hectares, mm -hmm. it's a very huge area. Mm -hmm. But I came to know from the uh, uh, sources, mm -hmm. there is a one type called landfill reactors. La Biofil uh, bio landfill bi reactors. Reactors. Yeah. We have it so, here in Kanzurma. Uh, they yeah. can be an option for reducing this yeah. burden of land requirements. There are some issues with that, for example, by rule, we shouldn't put any waste which is biodegradable to landfill, okay. But that this has gone, but then there are some other issues with the bioactive landfill. Instead of bioactive landfill, why not do anaerobic digestion? But one more thing is yeah. regarding the uh, heavy metal contamination in New Delhi area, they, they were suggesting that microorganisms, hmm. is it a uh, proposal on the landfill or or it's going to be on a leachate? I or don't know, that who, I who want was to, telling that? I want to, yeah. Oh, is yeah. it on a land, landfill area or is it on the leachate collected or it is on the groundwater? What is the yeah. idea what they are the scale? having? Yeah. Yeah. Please answer. So uh, uh, in USA, there is a state called Washington and uh, the first two nuclear bombs were assembled in Washington. So it is near Canada border and there is a river that is coming from Canada and it is passing through Washington state near Seattle. And the radioactive waste of those first two bombs were dumped 50 meters uh, inside the uh, ground chamber. So 10 years ago, they found that there is a little amount of radioactive leachate in the Columbia River. So they investigated and they found that after 50 years of dumping the leachate, which was not supposed to come out of, of 50 meters, they traveled a long way and came into the Columbia River and they were polluting the environment and the feces are getting radioactive and all other things. So what they did, they uh, discovered some kind of microbe that would eat those radioactive uh, materials and uh, produce glass. So uh, they took, a, I think it's called a glass uh, chamber project. So they introduced those microbes in that area and uh, their idea was to make the whole chamber is a compact solid glass. Mm -hmm. So it's a Landfill. Yeah, I, I think my another opinion on, you see, there are many technologies which always are coming up, right? And for example, this reclamation, this cleaning, that leachate treatment, there are always technologies for that. But please, when we're talking to students, please make it very clearly to them whether it's a commercialized technology, whether it's a lab scale unit, whether it's expensive, whether it's not expensive. Because what, otherwise what happens is, if we just tell them, oh, we can do everything. Yes, we can do. But then we have to also mention in many times, what is the cost component? Whether this technology which Ken is using, can we use it for 7,000 tons? Can we use it for one ton waste? For example, waste to energy, right? Anorvik digestion. How big can be a plant? So these things, if you don't tell them, they go from your class, assuming that everything is possible, but you're not doing anything. That is kind of unfair way of telling them. You tell them cost. You tell them this technology is there, but what is the scale? Where I'm using it? So if you don't answer them, then it is also confused. Okay, it's always good to tell them about your research, but at the same time tell that what is the limitation and what is the scale you're doing. Yeah. Is it will clear the idea of cost and everything? So better to take the students. So, so you are saying that you should take your students to the site? 
Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I don't I 100% agree with that. At my location, we are having gasifier also. Okay. Where yeah, are you from, sir? Varnanagar. Varnanagar. Okay. Kolapur district. Okay. So, you have a gasifier for solid waste? Yeah. But from agriculture or from? No. We are having industry, sugar industry. From industry, right. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Take You should take your students to the field and show them reality what's happening. Okay. That's a very good idea. I, do, I totally agree with that. But please write as a coordinator that what need to be done further so that this course can be delivered in the best possible manner. Yes. We should cover e-waste also? Ah, yes, we means I, it's I and you again together. Okay, I will put something on e-waste. This is very critical. You want a solid waste, but then in three hours it will be too much to ask for. If you want, I can have two slides. In, in the beginning, I can have what is solid waste and what is a jardas waste, what is industrial waste, what is e-waste, what is biomedical waste and I can add e-waste actually. Okay, please write it down there. Okay. So once you have written down, please give it to them and thank you very much.